down in the back and, and Kyle had tore his retina in his other eye. So, oh. So uh, tore his you, you got the B team today. What can I say? <laughs> so, he, did, he did one eye. But anyway, uh, no, quick announcements. Um, Wednesday <laughs> board meeting. Um, we got some important things to discuss. So if you could please, um, those who are part of the board, uh, please come. And even if you aren't part of the board, you can come. Uh, so please, uh, you just can't vote. You can't speak. You just got to sit there. So. <laughs> and absorb. That's not fun. <laughs> um, That'd be nice. Can you heckle? That'd be darn uh, me. Can you heckle? Oh, you can heckle. You oh. can heckle all you want. <laughs> and I know you will. So. <laughs> um, the other announcements we got a. Um, Christmas Eve service is going to be uh, uh, three weeks from today on the 20, two weeks from today on the 24th. Uh, it's going to be at nine o'clock. Uh, it's a, a candlelight service, so um, prayerfully, hopefully, you can all make it. Um, and I believe that's all the announcements that we have at this time. Uh, recollecting um, mittens at the Mitten Tree, correct? Yes. And that okay. goes that goes to the elementary and the middle school. And um, we can use hats, gloves, mittens, scarves, socks, scarves. anything like that um, for the mitten tree. And we're also going to do a food collection for the that will go to the Stewart Food Pantry, and we will put that under our Christmas tree for delivery after Christmas. And, and you don't have to be limited to food. You no, can, it you can be can paper products. Uh, they, they can always use it about anything right and I, I Linda's involved in that so if there's a need let us know paper products always they're okay. always in short and hygiene kit hygiene supplies are always short okay um, had a little goof up with our copier this morning just to add another wrinkle in everything so <laughs> I see the copies are coming copies but the bulletins are now coming out in a moment, you'll be able to read the response reading. So I'm going to turn it over to uh, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. 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 So I'm going to read from Psalm 85 today. And I'm going to read out of Doug's Bible, so I feel honored. Lord, you are. You were favorable to your land. You restored the fortune of Jacob. You forgave the inequities of your people. You covered all their sins. Let me hear what God, the Lord, will speak. For he, he will speak peace to his people, to his saints. But let them not turn back to folly. Surely his salvation is near to those who fear him. That glory may dwell in our lands. Steadfast love and faithfulness meet righteousness and peace. Kiss each other. Faithfulness springs up from the ground and righteousness looks down from the sky. Yes, the Lord will give what is good and our land will yield its increases. 
Righteousness will go before him and make his footsteps away. We like to listen to our prayer leaders. We light our hands. for the responsive reading. The voice cries out declaring God's presence. Comfort, O comfort, my people, says God. We come, we come preparing the way of the Lord. Together, Together we actively wait for God's peace. The voice cries out declaring God's equality. Valleys shall be lifted and his hills be made low. We come to make straight in the desert highway. Together we're pressing toward God's peace. The voice cries out declaring steadfastness. Grass withers, flowers fade, but God's word stands forever. We lift up our voices with strength and good tidings. Together we can call out God's peace. If you'd like to stand, if you're able to sing our opening hymn of praise, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, on page 119.
Gracious God, we sing Emmanuel, God with us, and we pray that you are with us by the power of your Holy Spirit, that you would lift us up this day, that we could sing our <coughs> songs of hallelujah, songs of gratitude to you. And we look forward to that day when we are reunited with your Son, Jesus Christ, in that heavenly realm. Let us sing Emmanuel, God with us, even now as the Holy Spirit enters into our sanctuary and lifts us up and hear our prayer that we that our Lord Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who have sinned against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. <laughs>
In days when God's people long for peace, Isaiah declared, Comfort, O comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her turn, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. Isaiah 40, verse 1. We who gather today also seek comfort and peace. Yet we are unsatisfied with ideas of peace that tell us to keep quiet and go with the flow. We long for real peace, true peace, and just peace. We wait as people who yearn for peace that bears the fruit of community, equity, and flourishing for all. We light these candles as signs of God's shocking hope and just peace. May they become beacons, calling us to repent and to live the good news of Jesus Christ as we wait and watch and labor for the day when all people can gather together to worship and glorify God. Amen. the joys of if there's anything at any time that you guys would like to lift up i would encourage you to do so um, as long as it's edifying to the body of christ as pastor scott said it. so um the, the the new testament reading from the epistle today comes to us from from second peter and, and it starts uh chapter three verse eight i'm just going to read the first verse there but do not overlook this one fact beloved that with the Lord one day is a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. We are in the middle of Advent, which I think is appropriate because we've seen the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and we wait for his coming again. But we want to always put a timeline on when he's going to do that, don't we? But that timeline isn't what God has in for intention for us. For he goes on to say in this, this second Peter that, that it's his desire that everyone should know Christ and come to the Lord. So when we try to put our timeline on God, when we tell him it needs to happen now, he says, well, you know what? It's my desire that all should come to know. And that should be our prayer for, the, for, for this season. That should be our prayer going forward in our lives that that we do look forward to that coming of the Lord, but we do so with the peace of knowing that he is near, near to us, and that he desires all of us, all who are here, all who are in this community to come to him, and he wants us to shout that out, to pray for, for those that are in need, those that are lost. Let us come into our time of prayer then by singing our hymn of prayer, Infant Holy, Infant Holy, number 163.
come into our time of prayer by taking a moment of quiet meditation and lift up your own thoughts and prayers to the Lord at this time. These are prayers, O oh Lord. And gracious God, we, we demand we demand the world from you. We demand everything from you. We, we want to live according to our own rules, our own expectations. We want to put a timeline on, on those things that we see fit to have happen sooner rather than later. Gracious God, this restrains you from your salvation that you have for the world, a, a, a salvation that you want to impart on each and every one who, who calls on your name. Gracious God, forgive us. Forgive us that we should be so selfish that we would put these demands on you and we ask for your forgiveness at this time. We lift you up. We lift you up on with voice. We lift you up in, in prayer. And we ask for forgiveness. And we know that we are forgiven. Through your perpetual grace given to us through your Son, Jesus Christ, and through the power of his Holy Spirit, we are marked for eternity. Grace is God. Today we lift up to you those that we have mentioned, those that are in need of your healing touch. We pray that all would be healed, that all would be made whole, that you would give wisdom to doctors and nurses to help in this healing process. We lift up to you families that have lost loved ones this week. What a shock it is to lose, lose those that are have been in our lives, that, that have touched us. Gracious God, may somehow we have touched them in a way that would bring your grace to them. Father, we thank you for the joys in our lives. We thank you that we can celebrate those achievements that we see in our loved ones. We would ask that you would continue to bless them throughout their lives, that you would give them a, a clear opportunity to, to fulfill all that you have prepared for them. We thank you for this gathering of people. We thank you for those gathering around this community and around, around the world today. And we ask that your blessing would be upon each and every one of them, that the Holy Spirit would be in them. And in so doing, we can bring light into a world of darkness at this time of year. <laughs> A time of year when we desperately seek your coming again. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name, through the power of his Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Gospel reading for today comes to us from Mark chapter 1, verses 1 through 8. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in Isaiah, in Isaiah the prophet. Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John appeared baptizing in the wilderness and proclaiming the baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And all the country of Judea and Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John 
was clothed with camel's hair and wore a leather belt around his waist and ate locusts and wild honey. And it preached, saying, saying, After me comes he who is mightier than I, the strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And may God bless the reading of his word. I was thinking about this this morning. Um, in the beginning, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. In the beginning, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. That word gospel is the good news. The good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And what is the good news of Jesus Christ to me? A few weeks ago, after Robert passed away, Dode asked me a few things to do with his service. She had a couple scriptures she wanted me to read, and they all had something to do with love. And she wanted me to give a message of salvation. And for the world of me, for the life of me, I had no idea what I was going to do, what I was going to say, how to prepare a word of salvation that would speak to Robert and his testimony of salvation that he had for each and every one of us. And I thought of this table when, when, when his children are up talking and his grandchildren are up talking. I looked up and I saw the table and I saw Robert at the table sharing the good news of salvation. This is what the table is. It's a, it's a salvation story. And it's our story to live each and every time we come to this table. We relive this salvation story. In that we see God's broken body. Broken for each and every one of us. In it we see the cup. God's blood spilled for the forgiveness of sin. Each and every time we do this thing, we proclaim his death until he comes again. That are, is the words that Paul shares with us, that Jesus shared with him. The good news, the gospel, is found in this table. All, all, who have accepted Jesus in their lives. If your faith tradition allows you to do so, we ask that you would participate with us. The only thing we ask is that you would hold the cup and that we would take it together. That you would hold the loaf and that we would take it together. For in this, brothers and sisters, we have salvation. This is the time of the year when we need to hold each other up in his grace and mercy. Let us come then to our communion table by singing our communion and Ferris, the Lord Jesus, in the 97. <laughs>
Christ Church, Jesus reminds us of his promise. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. We particularly treasure the Lord's Supper in which Christ is made known to us in the breaking of bread. Through sharing of bread and wine in thankful remembrance, we experience afresh the assurance of God's great love and kindness in Christ Jesus. Sustain and nourish within the body of Christ by these emblems, we confidently entrust ourselves to God's future filled with hope and promise. We recall that the Lord Jesus on the night before he was betrayed took a loaf of bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also. After supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, the proclaim, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. <coughs> Let us pray. O oh, gracious God, we thank you for the loving the, for loving the world into existence and sustaining all of life by your goodness. With gratitude, we recall that you revealed yourself through prophets and teachers and most fully in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Through the power of your spirit, let us know afresh the joy of Christ's living presence the strength to face every circumstance in life, and the knowledge that nothing can ever separate us from your love. Amen. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven, Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for you, and be thankful. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation, drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for you, and be thankful. Glory be to God. Please be seated.
should mention next week's candle is going to be the candle of joy, which is the pink one. So everybody wears pink to church next Sunday. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They'll have pink outfits on. For those of, you, those of us who are um, confident in our masculinity, you know, wear pink. <laughs> I think my wife threw my pink shirt away. <laughs> Anywho, uh, so I'm gonna uh, we're gonna do something a little bit different um, today. Uh, I'm gonna be um, in the Old Testament book of Isaiah, and this is not really gonna be a message, but it's gonna be more of a Bible study. Um, and that's basically because I had no idea what I was going to preach on until about six o'clock this morning. So instead of instead of uh, message, we're going to have a Bible study, and I have to address a couple things that were concerns to people. So um, if uh, you can follow along on the on the handout, or if you have your own Bibles there, uh, you're more than welcome to. Isaiah chapter forty, verses one through eleven. <coughs> Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry out to her that her warfare is ended, that her inequity is pardoned, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley should be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry. And I said, what shall I cry? All flesh is grass, and all its beauty is like a flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows on it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our Lord will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good news. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good news. Lift it up, fear not. Say to the cities of Judah, behold your God. Behold, the Lord comes with might and his arm rules for him. Behold, and his reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will tend his flock like a sheep. He will gather the lambs in his arms. He will carry them in his bosom and gently lead those that are with young. And may God bless the reading of his word. Let us pray. Gracious God, I do thank you. I thank you for your word, and I just pray that the words and meditations of my mouth and heart would be true to you, my Lord, my Savior, my everything. Amen. So, um, I said there was a couple concerns that were raised, and I, and I ask you all, if you ever have anything that you want to question me about, if you have concerns that, that I say from the pulpit or, or anywhere else, I, I ask you please to bring those up to me at any time. I, I invite those. In fact, I learn from those. Um, and a couple weeks ago, and I had a couple concerns raised to me. One, I, I don't think it's fair to, to address in public, but maybe with Pastor Kyle and, or maybe an elder or two, I can sit down with, with that particular person and we can go over some of my theology and some of my thought processes. The other one um, I was told I was going to address in the congregation. And since she gives me my allowance and makes me my supper, I figure I better, I better heed <laughs> what Susan told me. She was said that there's two words that I use over and over again, and I didn't realize I was using them. That's why I should probably be writing down my sermons. So I know what I'm saying. Um, 
Daryl and I have a little, we'll share that with you some other time. But, um, <laughs> but sometimes I, I get thought processes going in my head that I, I probably shouldn't use the words that I use. So there's two words. One is pericope, and it's spelled P-E-R-I-C-O-P-E, -E, okay? Um, what it is, it's a Greek word, and it means literally to cut around, to cut around. And, and back in Jesus' days, they called these pericopes. Um, they actually had a lectionary very similar, the, the Hebrews did, the rabbis, that would go into different sanctuaries. They would be itinerant rabbis. And they would go to different um, sanctuaries. They would have a particular scroll laid out for these, for these itinerant rabbis. And, and they would go from the pericope that was for that particular Saturday because their worship was on Saturday. There's an, an example of this. And, and I was just thought of it, so I brought it up on my phone here, of, of Jesus, and, and it was his rejection in, in, in Nazareth, and um, it comes to us from Luke chapter 4, so I'd like to share that with you, and he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up, and as was his custom, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and he stood up to read. And the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He run, unrolled the scroll and found the place where it is written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recover the sight of the blind. He set at liberty those who are oppressed to proclaim of the year of the Lord's favor. So that is a pericope. A pericope is what I shared this morning with you. In, in Christian lexicon, the pericope is, is a set of verses that have a central theme to it that, that are used for special um, services, Christian services. Christmas Eve, um, Ash Wednesday, Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, Easter morning, etc., etc., and Sunday morning. So we share a pericope. So I am sorry that I use that word and I shouldn't have. <laughs> but it's it's that set of, of verses. The ex other one that she said I used over and over, and I didn't realize I used this at all, but it's it was exegesis. E X E G E S I S. Exegesis. And again, it's a Greek word. And it literally means critical examination. So if I do an exegesis on a particular passage, I am doing a critical examination of that passage. So those are the two words that if I use them, and it sounds foreign to you, it is. So slap me upside of the head, and if there's anything else that I say here, Please, please tell me, okay? But they are Greek. I know about this much Greek from, from botany, and that's that's about it. And I know a little bit of Greek from, from my study of the Bible. So let's do an exegesis while we're at of this pericope. <laughs> Isaiah chapter 40, verses 1 through 11. As I've told you before, and this doesn't make a very good sermon, so I'm not going to dive too deep into it, but there are, according to some people, three Isaiahs, according to some, to some people, two Isaiahs. The first Isaiah is chapters 1 through 39, and they deal with Judah and Jerusalem <coughs> before they were cap, cap, captured by um, the Persians and dispersed into Persia. This was talking about their sin and what they were going to be, um, why they were going to be in cap captivity, and why they were going to fall away from the Lord. The rest of it, um, Isaiah 40 through 64 then, deal 
with the, the um, Jews that were in captivity, and it was that promise that they were going to come back at some time, and then at the very end, verses 60 through 64, it talks about how they are back in the promised land. They're back in Jerusalem and the rebuilding of the temple. And in uh, chapter 39, we, we see King Hezekiah, who was a good king. Um, he walked in the ways of God. He was a good king, but he had his faults. We all have our faults. His, he, he, he was boastful. Uh, when people would come and, and say, oh man, you got you know all these treasures. He, he was good at showing them the treasures. It doesn't get fully in to how Isaiah does it and into how they were captured. But but we can read that in first or second chronicles and in Jeremiah. The other thing we know about Isaiah, in particular about this particular passage, that I find interesting. And we, we read this from commentaries, we read this. From, from dictionaries and, and, and different um, sources on the Bible, um, concordances and that sort of thing. But in this particular passage, the, the prophet Isaiah is, is addressing three different people. So in verses 1 through 3, he, he uses the people that are being addressed. It comes across as being he, but actually... It's neither he nor she, it's both. So he's addressing both the males and the females prophets at this time. And they are plural. In verse 6 of this particular passage, he is addressing a singular person, and that is a male. But then again in verse 9, he is addressing a singular person, but it is a female. So most people who, who read this particular passage, read this commentary, they see it not addressing a single set of people, but all of God's people. All of God's people, male, female, singular, or in a group, we all have a voice to proclaim, to cry out. To be the one in the wilderness. We, we lay it on John the Baptist. But it's just as important for each and every one of us. To be that voice in the wilderness. He's also addressing, in this particular passage, he's addressing Jews that are still in Jerusalem. Jews that are somewhere on the highway between Jerusalem and Babylon. And he's addressing those that are in captivity in Babylon. He's addressing all of us that have been captive to our sin, that are either on the road to sin or on the road to salvation or, or who are already in salvation. Make straight the highway. That imagery just, it, it, it means so much. Picture this this roadway, this highway that you have to walk, because there's no cars, there's no trains, planes, or automobiles. But this was a road that people walked from captivity back to the promised land. Fill up the, the low places. Tear down the high places. Make straight his path. The rough you make straight and plain. That is instruction, not just for the one crying in the wilderness. But that is instruction for all of God's people. This is a promise that God will deliver his people back to the promised land. But this is a promise that is to be taken on not only by those precious few. But this is a promise that is to be taken on by all who have witnessed 
his salvation, his love, his glory. For you are his glory. You are his holy. You who have been baptized in his blood. And you who have been marked by his Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for, for the love that you have shown us in your son, Jesus Christ. We just ask that you would make straight the paths, that you would raise up the low places, that you would lock down the mountains. Those things that, that are keeping us from your salvation, that, that are keeping us from your promised land. Gracious God, know that we do seek you. And then finally, Father, we ask that you would give us a voice that we could be the ones crying out in the wilderness. Prepare, prepare the way. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our hymn of invitation, first moral. And I would like again to thank Ruth. She got noticed about three o'clock yesterday afternoon. So again, thank you, Ruth, for, for helping. Number 151, please stand if you're able. That's the first in a while.
to me in, in your understanding of, of me <laughs> so and your tolerance of me and now may the grace of our lord jesus christ the love that comes from god the father and the fellowship of his holy spirit be upon each and every one of you amen mm -hmm.